For today's episode, we're going to talk about advertorials, advertorial landing pages, but more generally, what the entire format is. We're gonna draw some inspiration from other media that's not just on a website, and we're gonna most importantly talk about what makes advertorials work, what makes them such an effective um, approach or format for your advertising, for your marketing, and the certain contexts in which they make the most sense. Let's start off by diving into the question that has inspired today's episode. So we have um, a, a question from what, A, right? I always use initials here. Hello, good sir. Can you do a video on advertorials? How to write them? What makes them great? Etc. And so here we go. <laughs> First note, what is an advertorial landing page? So I broke it down here, adver plus torial. Adver plus torial. So this, this, uh, this mashup here is actually really common in direct response marketing where we're making things look like one format but sell like an advertisement. Uh, so there's the, the, the Magalog, which it looks like a magazine but it sells like a catalog. Bookalog looks like a book, sells like a catalog. Um, you know, these are direct mail formats. Well, in traditional media, there was also the advertorial. So it sells like an advertisement but it looks like an editorial. It sells like an advertisement, but it looks like an editorial. And there really is a very long history in advertising of doing advertorials. Uh, basically, what people realized from very early on is that when somebody's buying like a magazine or they're buying a newspaper or they're you know flipping through any other editorial news publication, they have this uh, predisposition to reading the content and a predisposition to ignoring the advertising. And so some smart advertisers said, well, hmm, if I create advertising that looks more like the content, like the editorial, maybe I'm going to increase my readership. And when they increase readership, they increase response. And so that <laughs> worked out. And what happened is they quickly realized, okay, a lot of the things that we learn from advertisement, things like grabbing attention with a compelling hook and telling a compelling um, story or, or providing compelling content in the core of the message, followed by having a strong call to action, all of that is still incredibly relevant. So it still needs to work like an advertisement, but it's just formatted to look like an editorial. And they're also commonly used online today, especially in different paid traffic contexts. And so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this in a minute here, but there are certain situations where you almost have to have something that looks like an editorial in order to play the game, to show like it's, it is, it is the rules for playing the game in various advertising contexts that you cannot send someone to, for example, a video sales letter or a product page, that if an advertisement is going to appear on certain ad networks, that the, um, the first click that someone encounters when they go to, uh, when, when they click on an ad, it has to feel like editorial content. And so, that makes them very popular today for paid advertising just because it is the rules for playing the game. So why would you do an advertorial landing page? Uh, you know, first, first is because they work. They can do a great job of engaging people's attention and pulling them into your sales message in a way that kind of flies underneath the radar of, um, of the automatic advertising detector. So, as consumers, we have this, this, this automatic detector that's happening almost on a subconscious level of, hey, I don't feel like being sold to right now, so I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna skip the ads, right? And in certain contexts, we may want to go out and buy, we may want to engage with advertisements, but uh, there is a subconscious filter that often takes place before the conscious mind 
even decides if the advertisement is something relevant or interesting. The subconscious filter says, eh, this looks like an ad, I'm not gonna pay that much attention. And we see this in things like banner blindness. So when somebody is scrolling through an editorial page on a website, like they're scrolling through a blog post or a news article or whatever, the, their mind and your mind is just trained to skip over anything that looks like a banner, looks like an advertisement. And so by making your ad look more like um, look like editorial, then it's going to be more likely to get uh, to get engagement. Another thing that advertorials do is they pre-frame the sale, and so this this whole idea is. Let me give let me give you an example from completely outside of advertising. If you sell from the platform, if you do speeches with a call to action at the end, one of the things that you realize is that even from the point of the introduction with someone else introducing you and saying why everybody should pay attention, why everybody should listen, what everybody should be listening for, that person, that introduction is going to have an impact on your sales, no matter what you say if you were delivering the exact same message. And um, there's this whole, there's this great book by Robert Cialdini, who's well known for uh, Influence the Psychology of Persuasion, this book called Presuasion. And it's all about this idea that what we encounter immediately before the persuasive message also has an opportunity to influence what we're paying attention to, how open we are. And advertorial can pre-frame the sale on other um, on other advertising or other marketing messages. So if you have a video sales letter and somebody just read an article about how this new program that's uh, talked about in this video is uh, so incredible and it's changing lives and here's some examples, some case studies, all of that of this incredible new program. And then the links in that article, that editorial link through to the video that talks about the program, well, bam, um, then people are more open and receptive when they click through. Uh, I, I already talked about this, news minimizes the anti-advertising filter. And again, to access certain advertising networks, especially those that get a ton of distribution on uh, various news sites, those ad networks, the agreement that they have with the news publishers is that when somebody clicks through, their experience is gonna feel like a continuation of the the news consumption experience, right? And so the consumers are on a news site, they expect to consume news, they click on something that's maybe looks a little bit like a link to another article, but uh, it had a little advertisement note or ad note on it. They click through, they land on this page, and, um, and it has what appears to be more editorial content. And so people um, engage with that and then they click through. So they're no longer clicking from weather.com straight to a VSL, they're clicking from weather.com to something else that looks more like an article that then goes through to the video sales letter. And so weather.com does not have that direct association with, oh, we send people straight to video sales letters. Um, so what makes advertorials work? Well, the first thing, the first thing that makes advertorials work is that it feels like the media it is emulating. My very first advertorial was for, uh, it was for this like, it, it, was, it was for, for publishing in this magazine for, uh, about technology, like a local, net, uh, local, local market magazine that was talking about technology. And I wrote something that looked like an article that went on the inside front cover. And it just talked about this new, um, well, in, the, in this case, it was talking about this, this IT training and talking about this as an IT training opportunity. But what I did was I looked at previous editions of this and I identified, okay, here's how many columns the traditional editorial that's gonna be formatted like this. Here's the font or something close to the font, right? Here is, whatever, right? And I emulated what they were going to see in the rest of the publication as much as possible while also being able to format it like the ad that I wanted it to be. The other thing worth considering here is um, if 
advertorial can take a few different forms. So two of the most common forms, especially for written word advertorial, is something that's uh, that reads a whole lot like a blog and something that reads a whole lot like a news article. So the news article should look like news articles, especially from the types of sites that you're going to redirect people from. A blog should look more like a blog, right? And especially like if you think about or if you do some research, what are blogs in the market that are um, that get a lot of engagement, that have a lot of traffic? How are they structured? What do the pages look like when somebody lands on them? And you don't necessarily want to match everything one for one. We'll talk about some of the details for what you want to put on the advertorial page in a minute. But you want it to look a lot like they're landing on another blog post in that niche or they're landing on another news article in that niche. And so it should feel like the media it's emulating. Uh, it should fit in with the media around it. So using the example of that, that magazine that was about tech in a particular uh, geographic market, well, I made the article look like the, the articles around it. And that's a very, very important thing that you can do for advertorials is you want it to look as much like the media around it as possible. And um, again, if we are linking online, thinking about where people are coming from. Um, and so a lot of what makes advertorials work above and beyond basic principles of advertising, like, oh, this captures attention, it has a compelling reason for someone to take action, and it tells them explicitly what action they need to take. Above and beyond that, um, you know, you, you need it to look and feel like the media that's around it, and it needs to feel like it has an independent voice. And so you never want to explicitly disconnect yourself from the company that you're writing about in the ad. By that I mean, I'm, you know, you, you don't lie. You don't say, I'm completely not affiliated with this company and yada yada. But you want it to feel like, for example, an independent product review. Um, a, a lot of e-commerce advertorials read like a blog that is an independent product review of this product and oh hey by the way the company was running a sale on this and um, it's it's a really good deal and I thought that uh, you know you might want to check it out and see if that sale is still available click a link here right but it feels like an independent review uh, if it is a, a news article, it should look and feel more like a news article written about it. We'll talk about it being incredibly compelling, uh, the most interesting news that they've seen all day. But in general, you want it to feel like it's written from an independent voice. And actually, I have a really fun example for you in just a second. Um, but some more tips for effective advertorials. Well, to be effective, you have to be able to run. And one of the things that you'll experience if you write these to look and feel like a blog, if you write them to look and feel like a news article, it's probably going to, you're probably going to run into a situation where you have to explicitly label them as an advertisement. And so oftentimes this is done in all capital letters, sometimes a little bit small text, sometimes maybe a uh, sans serif font when when serif font is used throughout the page, or sometimes it's a you know slightly off black color where it's a it's a it's a it's a gray medium to dark gray um, where it's just not super obvious, but you need to put it at the top so that as somebody is engaging with the page for the first time, they can see it um, that it that yeah this is an advertisement um, because because effective advertorials are often walking the line so. Some publications, for example, have exclusive fonts. They have fonts that maybe have been copied and, um, and, and turned into a font that you can use, but you have to be careful because, uh, especially in traditional media, if you made it look too much like one of their articles, uh, they would actually not let you run it, and so you would have to change it. And so um, you may choose a similar for example, a similar serif font, but it may not be exactly the same font. Um, so you're walking the line here. How much does it feel like an, in a fully independent news source versus, and how much does it feel like the media it's coming from? So for example, um, you know, if, if I was running advertorials on 
weather.com, if I was running links to advertorials on the ad networks that serve on weather.com, if I had like, um, like uh, weather-com.com or something like that, and I made it look a whole lot like a weather.com page, I'm probably gonna get in trouble because that is deceptively mimicking these independent sources. Um, the, the, the key is to make it feel as much like news as possible without it necessarily, um, w without misrepresenting yourself, right? So it's, it's always walking this line, what's gonna get me the most engagement and the, the, the smoothest experience where people are not immediately having that advertising filter go off in their head, but at the same time, um, uh, still standing out enough that uh, that I'm not paying for deceptive business practices, right? Um, it's worth noting here that format plus copy are a combined decision. Format plus copy are a combined decision. Uh, meaning, when you're thinking about okay, what do I want to write in this in this advertorial? You have to think about how's it going to be presented on the page. What are the graphical elements going to be? What are the uh, what are the captions on the photos going to be? How are we going to lay out the page? What are the different elements that are necessary to include on the page? Uh, we'll t we'll talk about that with this lots of links in just a second here, but. All of that really is a combined decision and you have to fully consider uh, how the entire layout is going to look. And oftentimes what I've done for similar projects is, is, is I've mocked up the layout the best that I could so that I can see it all and I can experiment with it all as I'm writing the copy. Now I want to show you something uh, to really emphasize this one point here. Um, so. You know, yet another tip for effective advertorials is while you are trying to look like an editorial, you also want this to be the most compelling, the most interesting news story of the day, the news story that they can't skip. And here is a uh, here is an ad that Gary Halbert wrote, and this became a really famous story uh, because it like completely shut down the Century Plaza Hotel. Like the, the fire marshal told them that they couldn't let any more people in. Like Gary has this whole interesting story uh, behind this ad. But then it was kind of lost to history. Uh, as far as I knew, when I discovered this in the LA Times archives and actually paid to, uh, to download it, the even the Halbert brothers, Gary Halbert's sons, did not have a copy of this ad. So, um, the, uh, this is an example of having your ad be the most interesting story in the news publication. And here at the top, you see the advertisement slugs. Um, and then we have free perfume giveaway. Mrs. Ernest Borgnine agrees to give away 100,000 free samples of her new perfume just to prove it is safe to wear in public. Wife of famous actor swears under oath that her new perfume does not contain an illegal sexual stimulant. So. This is a bit over the top, right? It's like it's, whew, uh, it's 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 a uh, it's an exciting headline, but it's also written in a way where it almost could have been written by a reporter for the LA Times. Um, is there such thing as a perfume that drives men crazy? Maybe, maybe not. Scientists all over the world have different ideas on the subject. Uh, he's got this whole like interview format that he has going on. Uh, it's and then there's a there's a call to action free perfume giveaway. It tells you how to how to go and how to claim the free perfume. So it does all the things that an ad needs to do, but it's presented very much like a um, like a piece of editorial inside the publication. Now I actually I have a link in the description to my. Uh, to my Why Ads Worked training that goes actually line by line and does a huge breakdown of that entire ad if you're interested in diving in deeper. Um, but that's a great example of how he took this, this idea of promoting Tova perfume and made it the most interesting of the news story of the day. Uh, in fact, Gary orchestrated this entire event at the Century Plaza Hotel as part of that uh, that launch of that perfume, which went on to be a very, very successful perfume. Uh, 
online, since we're talking about advertorial landing pages, one of the things that you want to do is make sure that you're including lots of links in the page. And so if you think of news articles, if you think of blog posts, a lot of sites that get a lot of traffic do this thing where they are linking throughout the news article um, or throughout the blog post. They're, they're linking throughout the copy. Uh, sometimes it's just a word or two that is linked. Sometimes there's more of a call to action linked. And you can do the same thing in your advertorials, especially at the bottom you want to have one, but you don't want to wait till the bottom for that. But the other thing is you can put links all over the page. You can put, you can create banner ads on that page that link to the same destination. All of them should link to the same destination. These should not link everywhere. They shouldn't send people all over the internet. They should all link to the same destination. But you take advantage of people who want to read and who will click the link at the end because they just read the entire article and click the link. You take, take uh, you set up your, your situation in such a way that people who will just click whatever link is interesting to them as they're reading through, that those people have links to click. You, uh, you set up your situation so people who are looking for a button to click have a button to click. Uh, people who will click on photos, uh, you, you make your photos clickable so they'll go through. You create banner ads for people who do pay attention to banner ads, right? You can actually create ads inside your advertorial, like a text ad inside the advertorial that also links people through. And you want to come at the call to action from lots of different directions here. But this is maybe one of the most powerful things and the most distinguishing thing when it comes to advertorial landing pages online, that you want to do that kind of linking um, as well and not have it just be oh, I wrote an article and it's all text, and at the end of the article, there's a link to the call to action, right? So if you wanna write and create advertorial landing pages, remember, it is an advertisement, it's not just editorial. Um, the voice is probably going to be a little bit different, it's that independent voice, but the core structure of the ad is not. Uh, Follow this hook content CTA formula. You need to do something to hook their attention. You need to have good content that supports your call to action, uh, that, that gives people the reason why they want to act and why they need to act now. And then you need to be clear with your call to action, maybe have a lot of them. I strongly recommend the idea of method copywriting here or method marketing here where you're actually getting in the mind. So if you have to write a blog post, get in the mind of the person who would write that blog, the actual blogger and think, oh, I'm a blogger in this market. And like, here's the things that I think about. Here's how, uh, you know, here's how interesting blogs in this market seem to be structured. And so like here, you know, maybe it's a personal story at the beginning, uh, followed by what, whatever, right? Um, but you can, you're going to get in the head of that or you're going to get in the head of a reporter and you're going to say, okay, I need my five W's. You know, I need who, what, where, when, why, how, right? right? Like I need, I need all of that in there. I need a uh, compelling lead to the story. I need uh, quotes with that Gary Halbert ad. He actually included an interview with Tova in the middle. Now it was a hilarious interview, very different, but <laughs> than, than what you might've normally seen. But it was a very compelling uh, use of the traditional editorial format where there are often conversations. Um, there are often quotes from experts, right? Uh, do a mock-up to plan everything, the copy, the visuals, the calls to action, the links, the ads, like everything that you're going to include. And uh, yeah, just, just do it, just lay it out there and think about this as more than just copy. And then importantly, test, 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 test. Um, the cool thing about advertorials is it can be faster and easier than writing a full sales page to write you know, five or 10 of these. Uh, so don't write one advertorial and stake everything on that. Write 10 advertorials and test each of them and see which one is the most interesting, the most compelling, gets the most traffic and gets the most click-throughs to whatever the sales page is that follows. So my call to action for you at the end of this is, is, is is you're asking advertorial landing pages what makes them work, ask for yourself how can you use this? What takeaways, what action items do you have? You can certainly share your action items in the comments with this episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want more content like this. I do daily episodes on copywriting, marketing, business building, entrepreneurship, all that good stuff. This is Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. I'm Roy Fur, and 
Check out the links in the description to why ads work that includes that Gary Halbert Tova perfume ad line by line breakdown where I analyze like what he did if for you know each piece of copy, each segment. It's part of the BTMS Insider streaming library of copywriting and marketing courses. You pay one low monthly fee, so it's like Netflix streaming service, and you get access to everything. And if you do have a question like this you'd like to have answered in an upcoming Mailbox Monday episode, I'll include a link to do that as well. Um, and I will catch you again in the next episode. I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you once again for tuning in to this daily episode of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Remember, check out the links with this episode for even more value. Now make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, and engage in every way you can to keep this show going and growing and delivering daily value to you. I'll catch you soon for your next big breakthrough.